Right, what's going on there, guys? We're at the battery charging station here. I want to show you what we got going on. The small charger that comes with the uh, Gladius is actually for the spindle. There is a small black nut that you will unscrew and you will plug uh, the power cable into, which will turn red. When this is done and turns green, that means the spindle's charged. You will also notice that the uh, large charger that came uh, in the case right here is still red and that plugs into the back of the Gladius which once again there is another black nut that has to be removed and uh, then you just plug it right into the back you wait for both of those to turn green when these are done charging I will go ahead and talk over functionality and app setup so I will see you guys in a second What's up there guys, so I just want to do a quick talk about storing the Gladius as well um, because, you know, this is just a quick battery charging video, but I also want you to understand that, that lithium polymer batteries need to be taken care of very carefully, so if you ever plan to store or leave your Gladius sitting, as with most LiPo batteries, you never want to let them just sit on a full charge for a long period of time. It will actually end up damaging the battery, and if you, you know, these get 300 charge cycles before they have to be changed, and obviously you can't change them yourself. This, this is something that would have to be sent back to the company, uh, because whenever you break open a container that was designed to be watertight sealed, it will never go back together correctly unless the company does it. So, um, basically, you never want to leave your battery on a high voltage just sitting fully charged for long periods of time, okay? Um, so what you want to do is basically, like most LiPos, you run them down to a storage state, which would be considered about 50% of the battery if you're going to leave it in storage mode. And that's the same thing you would want to do to this. So if you're planning on letting your Gladius sit for a long period of time, which I can say most people probably aren't using this on a daily basis, make sure that you're running the battery down to at least a 50% ratio before storing it and putting it up. Because if it sits on high voltage, you'll end up damaging the cells, and then you won't get nearly as many charge cycles out of the battery. And end up going back to chasing innovation a lot sooner than you expected. So, take care of your battery, guys. So the first thing you're going to do, guys, is come over to your Gladius. You're going to make sure that your antennas are screwed on uh, when you get to your location. Then you're going to take this uh, cable, and uh, there's actually a rubber guard that comes on the end of the cable right here. There's another rubber guard that comes on top of the Gladius. Both of those will have to be removed. There's an O-ring inside of here. You push this down, and then you screw this down nice and tight. Once that's screwed on tight, you are ready to go for your first use uh, with this. However, you still have to set up the app. So what I am going to do is come over here. I'm going to start a screen recording with MobaZen so I can try to show you guys how all this works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the unit uh, over here we're just going to push the button once it's connected it will power up the Gladius so we're going to go ahead and turn on the power it's going to talk to the flight controller I say flight controller because technically it is kind of flying underwater it also sounds like an ESC which is super cool there we go it makes most of your ESC sounds like normal so I'm going to come down here and I'm also going to let's see we're going to go to settings we're going to go to Wi-Fi I'm going to pick this up so you guys can see it. So we have Wi-Fi here. I'm going to scan. I'm going to show you that there are two options here that you can make available. Let me start my screen recording here. <laughs> Billy Kyle just got a hold of me. So let me know a date and time. Sounds good, Billy. All right, so as you can see, I have it collect, uh, connected currently to Gladius 5G. There's also Gladius 4G. Um, I'm sorry, Gladius 2.4. Uh, and, and really, I, I say this, you want to stay connected to Gladius 5G if possible, uh, if, you're, if your phone is able to connect to multiple Wi-Fi protocols like 2.4 or 5G, uh, dual band. Um, 5G is going to give you the best video possible from this unit here. So take that into consideration. 2.4 will look smoother, but it won't look as good. Like you'll be able to take this further. For instance, if you were putting this out in the water and you were floating the buoy, you would not want to be connected to 5G. You would definitely want to do the 4G or the uh, 2.4 connection that it offers, which for some reason I'm not really seeing right now. I had 2.4 earlier. Oh, so let me do a rescan here and see if it finds it again. I had 2.4 and I assume 2.4 is for long distance, so if you were actually floating the buoy and wanted to send it out, you could do that. 
very interesting. 2.4 is not popping up. But anyways, okay, long story short, for whatever reason, it's decided to not show its face this time around, so all good. Um, you would connect to the Gladius 5G, and the password is 12345678. That gets you initially set up to use it once you are connected. You can go ahead, let me stop my screen recording because I'm going to have to turn my phone sideways. Close, excellent. So now we're going to put my phone in the controller and I'm going to show you how to get the controller set up here. Okay, so unit is still on, controller's in its base. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click on the iffy app, which I will supply a picture for on the left again. So it is if.dive. Once this pops up, going to go to drone device. So it says that it is connected right now. As you can see, it says connected. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, start. Now that it's connected, it is communicating. It says need calibration. Mobile compass needs calibration. Do you want to continue? For right now, I'm just going to hit no. Uh, we will go into the calibration later. So now I have everything hooked up except for the controller. So what we're going to end up doing, guys, is all you're going to do is come down to the home button like so. Actually, let's do this. And not, uh, here we go. Recording stopped. So we're going to start another recording here. Sorry. Okay, we are recording. So I'm going to push the home button because up here it says uh, gamepad not connected, if you can see that up in the right hand corner. So I'm just going to hold home down. And when this turns solid, it connects. There we go. As long as your Bluetooth is turned on on your phone, it will automatically connect to Bluetooth. So now I have full functionality and controls. If I hold this down, I can turn the lights all the way up. As you can see, the light meter down here in the left, when I adjust the lights, you can see the numbers counting up and down. And by the way, when this is out of the water, they say do not leave the lights on until it gets in water because the water actually cools off the lights, the front of the lens guards, to keep it from breaking the glass and other fun things here. So you're basically set up and ready to go. Um, I'm going to try to explain this to the best of my ability. I have VR mode active right now because I have a VR headset I would like to try this with. And so that's pretty cool that this allows you to do VR. I'm going to turn the lights up just for a sec so you guys can see the latency lag going on here. Are you ready? There's actually a very tiny amount of latency lag. I don't even think it's one second. It's like half a second. Uh, so that's very good. Let me turn those lights off. Um, recording on this side, change between camera and video on this side. So if I push this button, it should change over to uh, camera to take pictures. So there you go. I just click this. It'll take pictures. I can go inside of here and adjust my settings. So we're going to click it again. It should move us back over to video. Beautiful. Back over to video and I can adjust those settings right here by tapping on it. I can change over to 4K or 1080. Uh, if I'm in 4K, it only lets me shoot in 30. If I'm in 1080, it lets me shoot at 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and 120 frames per second. That's actually really good. Allows you to change your bit rate factor. Um, arm and lock the motors right here. Slide to arm. You can actually use the start and stop button to do that. So as you can see, it, it has activated now. It is in self-stabilizing mode. So if I come over here and I tilt it, as just like a quadcopter, you would get that same effect of it trying to keep itself stable. So very cool. Let's go ahead and disarm it. All right, so disarmed. And any time that you guys actually set this up and you're going away from yourself when you first start, make sure it is pointed directly away from you before you hit start and arm it because that is what it's going to show your 3D function down here as being your center point. So when you want to come back and turn towards yourself, this, this little 3D rendition of itself down here in the bottom left hand corner is actually very accurate. So when I turn it, you can see the gyro actually uh, doing things in the accelerometer, you know, closely following what the craft is doing. So you, you want to make sure this is as accurate as possible. And the only way to do that is to arm it directly away from yourself. So that's pretty much it for this app. I'm not just quite sure what the home button does. Okay, so that takes us back out to the main menu. Uh, we'll do a, ca a calibration here in a bit. Um, other than that, it actually has a depth finder. I made sure to change it uh, over to feet, and then it tells you the water temperature, lets you know your lights and how powerful they are. And then if you want to take this out of stabilized mode or put it back in stabilized mode, there's an S up here. You would click on that S, 
and now it's set up for a full uh, acro basically just like a race quad you could do rolls and flips and all that fun stuff um, and believe me this thing moves through the water I think it's like four or five knots it, it really covers some ground quick if you want it to it has a two hour run time so pretty easy app to understand there's not much to it and then if you click right here it gives you other option settings you can go into system you can change some uh, indicators you can set up for VR mode on the front screen uh, about system version let's see here ROV uh, this is where you can adjust your speed settings so right now like when tomorrow when I put this in the water at my pool we're actually just gonna keep it at 30 percent until I feel comfortable this is also where you can change your units over from metric to inch and then calibrate your device so if you needed to calibrate your device like it's telling me I need to this is where I would come I would click on that and then I would calibrate my phone and I'm pretty sure it's gonna show me a picture of me having to do this and do all the compass calibration so we'll get into that tomorrow before we take this out for its first initial uh, water run and then camera I'm not quite sure what either of these are oh I see I see okay so I can remove the machine disk data so any videos you recorded you can clear that this has 64 gigs of internal built-in memory that I'm aware of and then I want to know what this is this live open open your live I'm wondering if I can live stream uh, the footage from this directly to like Facebook or your YouTube I think that would be extremely cool if not I can do it through a screen recorder and we'll give that a shot sometime but right now just checking out the basic settings here and then handle allows you to do GPS or or I'm sorry USA or, or Japan I'm not quite sure what either of these two are I haven't uh, figured that out and then you can do custom key binding so you can actually adjust the keys to how you want this to be set up so pretty pretty simple there's not much to this it's very cool there's no GPS on this unit so very basic setup when you're done all you're gonna do is push the power button turns it off and then you're good to go you just hold this down and it'll turn off the controller I'm gonna go ahead and stop my screen recording I think did I stop it oh here we go screen recording in progress I think I stopped it yep we're good okay close so that is the initial setup for this it's quite simple actually um, there's really not much to it so tomorrow we're gonna go ahead and take this out I'm gonna put it in my pool it goes all the way down to eight or ten feet on the other half of the pool so we've got a little room to work with and uh, we'll see how this thing functions before we actually get it out into the ocean so drone worship and I'll see you guys in a bit